Hi everyone, I'm Tristan Lee from Layer Zero. Welcome to getting started with GraphQL and caching on Next.js, Apollo, and Layer Zero. Today's talk is going to be hands-on with GraphQL. Our stack will be the popular Next.js framework, Apollo client for front-end fetching, and Apollo server as our GraphQL endpoint. And this will all be running on Layer Zero. The task today will be converting a REST API to GraphQL, and then at the end as a bonus, we'll be using Layer Zero to cache the GraphQL API at the edge. If you're not familiar with Layer Zero by Limelight, we're basically a production-ready modern web hosting in a box. Everything you need from serverless, CDN, observability, RUM, and more. We're backed by Limelight Networks, and if you're not familiar with Limelight, they're the second largest private edge caching on the planet. Really well known for video streaming by big names in the industry, and with our large bandwidth, we're making our way into the CDN space. So now you can use that network for caching of web applications, including GraphQL. That's why we're here today. We have support for all the most popular frameworks, and we've been proven at scale for companies you see here on the right. In fact, Universal Standard was a case study at the Jamstack conference earlier this year. One of the key features we're rolling out this month is GraphQL caching. This means you can cache the response of that GraphQL query at the edge. And as you may know, GraphQL uses post requests even when you're just querying for cacheable data. And most CDNs are built on the assumption that only Git requests are cacheable. But with Layer 0 by Limelight, you can cache those at the edge with our features. You can also cache your GraphQL entities based on data in the response, which I will demonstrate later in the video. Layer 0 can also be used for third-party GraphQL endpoints. Today I'm demonstrating hosting on our own serverless API, but the same functionality is available if your GraphQL API is hosted elsewhere. Cache clearing can be done within our UI or via the API, and coming soon, we will have support for purging the cache on mutations. So for example, when a mutation is made to update product information, the cache for that will automatically be purged and fresh for future requests. With that being said, let's jump into the hands-on section. So I'll start with a short overview of how we've implemented GraphQL in this Next.js app. As I mentioned earlier, we're taking an existing REST API and using that to feed data to our GraphQL instance. So what I've done is I've created a new API endpoint here in Next called graph.js. And what this uses is the Apollo server from the Apollo server micro module. And this is just a very basic handler that creates our API endpoint to slash API slash GraphQL. So all front-end GraphQL requests will be pointing directly to this endpoint. And in the front-end code, I'm using the Apollo client library, specifically the use query hook. And this is what I use to fetch the data for the different categories and products from the browser. Now our GraphQL implementation is resolved using the REST API that I mentioned before. This is simply a CMS library that I had created that fetches our JSON data from this endpoint and puts it into the format that is defined in our GraphQL schema. So as you can see, we've got our, our category and product schema and the different queries for getting the categories, getting the products of the category, and lastly, getting a specific product. So let's start up the next server and see how this application works. So here, the header component does a fetch to get the different categories as seen here. Obviously within each category are its products and further down to the product details. Each item I click on creates a new query to fetch the data, none of which are cached and would be costly to both fetching from the back end each time and a slow experience for the user. So let's look into how we can add cache logic to these requests. When you initialize an application with layer zero, we create a routes.js file, which controls the edge logic for routing and caching of the requests that come in. To add caching to our GraphQL API, we need to define the path of the GraphQL API, the name of the operation, and the cache configuration object. In this case, I have pre-configured this to live for one hour on the edge. Next, we define the different GraphQL operations. For each operation, we will also create a cache handler and pass it our cache configuration. In order to give granular control over what responses can be purged from the edge cache, we can set a surrogate key that, in this case, 
is specific to the individual product. Using the render with app handler, we are telling layer zero to apply the defined caching behavior, continue to process the request with Next.js, and then in the response, we derive the surrogate key based on the product ID. Now we have the ability to purge the cache specific to this product should the data become stale. Once we've made the changes, we can start the layer zero development server. This compiles the changes to the layer zero router we just defined, and we'll start the Next.js server in the background. This way, all requests are received by layer zero, then proxy to Next.js for handling of the GraphQL request, and then layer zero sends a response with the result in the modified cache headers. Now back on our app, we can use layer zero's dev tool to enable caching in the development environment. This emulates the behavior of caching at the edge. To test our cache changes, we can click through a few of the links to warm up the cache. These are expected to be misses as noted by the red icon because they have not yet been requested. After a few clicks around to cache some of the responses, we can refresh and see that our GraphQL requests are indicating yellow, which defines a hit at the edge. Further inspection of the response headers we can see that the product was given a surrogate key that we defined. And we can also inspect the X0T header to confirm the response was in fact a hit at the edge. So that's a quick tour of using Next, Apollo, and Layer 0 to implement and cache GraphQL. Want to emphasize you can also use this caching for third-party GraphQL endpoints. This may have gone by really fast for some, so here are the links to the source and documentation. You can try this out on Layer 0 for free. You can even deploy this example in one click and try it out yourself. Feel free to reach out to us via forums or Twitter. Thank you.